And CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Major Garrett is in our Washington Bureau and joins us now. And, you know, Major, they call the battleground states battleground states for a reason. Is there any sense that we know how the voters in the states that are going to decide things in a week and a day uh, are feeling about this latest controversy? Voters possibly not, but field operatives with the Republican National Committee who are the eyes and ears for the Trump campaign because the Trump campaign has no ground operation of its own to speak of, they do tell me, and I was in contact with many of them over the weekend, a noticeable shift from their perspective, a positive shift in momentum as a result of this renewed FBI inquiry into Hillary Clinton's emails and those around Hillary Clinton, namely Huma Abedin. A week ago, Josh, when I was having conversations with these very same field operatives, they were very glum, very despondent, saying, you know, not only do we think Trump is going to lose, but we're fearful now about losing the Republican-controlled Senate and maybe more House seats than we originally anticipated. There was def definitely a sense a week end ago of despondency. This weekend, no one is, that I talked to was predicting a Trump victory, but they were much more robust about the chances of Republicans holding on to the Senate and maybe not losing as many House seats and possibly, possibly seeing a Trump victory because they believe these revelations about Hillary Clinton have had a galvanizing effect in one particular section of Republicans long reluctant and skeptical about Trump. Those suburban higher educated Republicans who have been repulsed by Trump either because of his rhetoric, his personality, or his policies. And those things are all still true, they tell me, Josh. The one big difference is this weekend may have crystallized the sense that however unacceptable Donald Trump may be, Hillary Clinton very well could be more unacceptable. And that is having, they said, over the weekend, an effect of rallying some of those Republicans, bringing them closer into the fold and being more responsive to RNC outreach on Trump's behalf. Is this momentary or does it suggest a permanent shift? We don't know yet, but there was a definite sense that the ground was shifting, a surge in momentum was occurring, and this is happening at a very, very good time for Trump. And so we're seeing interesting choices made by Donald Trump heading to the Rust Belt today, Michigan today, Wisconsin tomorrow. States largely consider that we'll go blue uh, this cycle. Could we see uh, the nominee make adjustments to his campaign schedule in the next few days? You know, they make adjustments almost on an hourly basis. They put their schedule together on the fly. Michigan and Wisconsin can only be described as outside the box stops at this stage of a campaign. There is no polling data that puts Trump within the margin of error in either state, maybe Wisconsin in some surveys, but not the preponderance of them and certainly not in Michigan. But Trump has always had this upper Midwest blue collar industrial Midwest theory behind his campaign that that is the place and those are the places rather where his message would most resonate. It's been a while since he's been in Michigan, several weeks, a little bit less time between visits to Wisconsin, but still those are on the outer fringes of the battleground strategy, electorally speaking, for Trump. They're curious decisions, but that's where he's going to be. That's where the voters are going to hear him. The one thing the Trump campaign always believes, though, it doesn't matter where he goes, he's heard nationwide, and I think there is some truth to that. Major Garrett there in Washington, we do appreciate it. You got it.